What's up guys, Lon here from Android Authority and TouchWiz has changed a lot over the years and the same way Android has evolved, TouchWiz has evolved along with it. The new version of TouchWiz on the S7 and S7 Edge or whatever Samsung is calling their UI these days has changed a lot. Even if you're coming from something as recent as the Note 5, you're going to notice some differences. So what is TouchWiz like on the S7 and S7 Edge? Is it good? Is it bad? What's changed and what is still the same? So the easiest place to start would be the aesthetics because those are usually the differences that you can spot right away without having to dig too far into the software. And I think the way TouchWiz has looked over the years has been a pretty big reason why I and maybe a lot of other people out there haven't really been a fan of the UI. It definitely still needs quite a bit of work, but this is probably the most eye-pleasing version of Samsung's interface that we've seen, so it looks like they're headed in the right direction. The first thing you'll notice is the notification shade has been replaced with a more subtle blue and white, which I personally think looks a lot cleaner over the nasty blue and green that Samsung stuck with for so long. If you're still not 100% satisfied with some of the aesthetic changes that Samsung has made, the theme store is still a really great option. This was actually introduced on last year's S6, but it is by far one of the greatest features that Samsung has ever implemented into their phones. There's tons and tons of themes to pick from, including a lot of Android 6.0 and material themes to make it look a lot more like stock Android. There's also been some subtle changes made to the animations like the way the shortcuts in the notification shade expands as you pull down, or how the recent apps expands onto the screen. They don't drastically make a huge difference to the user experience per se, but these little changes definitely help in making the UI feel a little bit more polished. Speaking of polish, many of Samsung's features have been put into a single location in the settings under advanced features, making them much easier to find. So all the Samsung features that you may have been used to in the past like pop-up view, smart capture, palm swipe to capture, and some of the more recent ones like the camera quick launch, one-handed operation, and game tools are all under one convenient location. Another feature that I've really liked is the ability to move multiple applications to another home screen at one time. You just drag the applications that you want to move to the top of the screen, and this will allow you to move up to five applications at once. And this is just another good example of how Samsung is really trying to focus on the minor details of how they can make their interface easier and more user friendly. There's a couple new features that Samsung has added to the S7 and S7 Edge this year to further refine the experience. The first one is the always on display. Right now it can show you the clock, calendar, or a couple of random predefined images, and it can show you notifications, but only from Samsung apps at the moment. It is very limited in functionality and nowhere near as robust as something like Motorola's Moto Display, but it is handy to see the clock or calendar, and because it doesn't drain much battery, it's not that big of a deal if you leave it turned on. The second feature that I've really enjoyed is the game launcher and game tools, and if you're a big mobile gamer, I think you'll really like this feature a lot. The game launcher automatically aggregates any game that you've downloaded into a single folder and provides you with an option to save power during gameplay by reducing the resolution and frame rate. If you've ever been annoyed with getting notifications while you're playing a game or always found yourself accidentally pressing the capacitive keys, this is where the game tools really comes in handy. The game tools puts a floating bubble on top of your game that lets you mute incoming alerts, lock the capacitive keys, minimize the game, take a screenshot, or record a video. Now I know I've been saying a lot of good things about Samsung's interface so far, but it still isn't without its quirks. The default icons are still very bright and cartoonish, but the app drawer is probably the worst offender. The app drawer gives you the option to sort apps alphabetically, but it only sorts the apps that you currently have installed. So if you download a new application, it automatically goes to the end of the list and you'll have to resort it again. The same rule applies when uninstalling applications, and if you uninstall a bunch of apps at one time, this leaves a gaping hole in your app drawer. Not entirely sure why Samsung chose to do it this way, but it would have been nice to have an option to keep the app drawer sorted alphabetically at all times, the same way it normally is on stock Android. If you have the S7 Edge, you're obviously dealing with some extra software features that take advantage of the curved screen. You have many of the same features from last year like the People Edge and the Apps Edge, but the Edge interface is two columns wide now to fit more information and twice as many apps. 
You can now also create shortcuts through commonly used tasks and quickly view information like stocks, sports scores, and the current weather. And I really like that you can rearrange these panels in any order that you want. Because the Edge UX offers a lot more utility now, I won't go as far as calling it a gimmick, but you do have to train yourself to get used to these Edge features or else you may end up forgetting that these features even exist, which is something that happened to me a lot when I first started using the S7 Edge. Once you do make that adjustment, I think you might actually find some of these features to be quite useful. So overall, I think Samsung has made a lot of really great improvements with their UI, and it's not something that I feel compelled to completely change out with a third-party launcher anymore, like I did in years past. It's not perfect, and there's still some quirks that Samsung needs to iron out, but they are definitely on the right track. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up down below. We definitely appreciate it. And also subscribe to the channel, which is also down below if you haven't already. And check out the S7 and S7 Edge reviews. Those are currently live on the YouTube channel and on the site uh, if you haven't checked those out yet. And feel free to follow us on social media, on Snapchat, on Twitter, on Instagram. And feel free to follow me on Twitter as well. All the links are right in front of you right now. And check out the website as well, AndroidAuthority.com, because we are your source for all things Android.